Hi there, thanks for joining me. I have a flip through today of a journal I just recently finished. I had a lot of fun with this journal and it seemed to all come together in like the last 36 hours and she just became magical to me. Um, anyhow, you'll see. Uh, let me apologize. Oh, I'm Catherine, by the way. So if you're new here, thank you for joining me. Um, if you hear some noise in the background, um, I do have a puppy in the room with me. And and she doesn't understand what shh means. <laughs> She's busy doing puppy things. Uh, the Roundabout Papers is actually the title of the book. And uh, because sometimes the journals I create end up taking on different names. And it was originally volume 12 out of 13 volumes of some books by Thackeray. And this one was called Roundabout Papers, etc. because there were several different stories in this book. But am I ever glad that they chose Roundabout Papers to be the title that went on the spine because uh, what a magnificent title for a journal. I just... I was so thrilled when I saw that. This book was originally published in 1899. It was in very sad condition when I found it. These are the original marbled papers. This is the original um, worn out leather. And in fact, when I went to take it apart to rebuild it into a journal, the spine completely fell off. <laughs> so if you've been following along, you know what I did in order to reinforce it and make it strong again. But as I always say with my journals, they're not always pretty. They can be quite grungy uh, in my efforts to um, strengthen them again. I don't, I am not a book restorer. Uh, but what I will do is make it strong again so it can have another life. And I have a feeling this journal has had many, many lives. It just sort of, uh, it's like the message came to me in the last few hours. <laughs> and uh, so the this spine, in order to preserve it, because it's so beautiful with the banding on it and this gold uh, somehow or other time preserved all that gold with the beautiful flowers on it. Um, so I was able to fortify it from the inside out, but then I used um, brads to make sure that it holds really nice and securely. And same with using brads to hold this book plate in place with um, I put the roundabout papers, etc., which is, as I said, what it's called. But this can come out, and you can take this out, flip it over, and rename this book whatever you choose. It can, it's yours. So um, that's one of those lovely things that's flexible. It doesn't have to keep that title. Now um, these will go along with the journal when uh, when she goes off to her new home. Uh, it's just a pretty little piece of lace. I used some of this lace in the, the, at the top and at the bottom of the header and footer of the spine. And then there were oodles and oodles of really uh, cool chapter headings and uh, lots of fun illustrations that I just didn't get to use them all. And I know that the new owner will have a lot of fun uh, either making tags or ha putting it back into this journal or maybe using these in one of uh, their other journals because junk journals usually have many many junk journals. So uh, as I said this uh, journal is um, it's big it weighs a lot I, I don't usually go crazy in my journals anymore. I usually they usually almost go out nearly naked. This is not naked. This book is is chock full of fun little twists and turns and little hidden messages 
and hopefully um, I can point them out to you and if not hopefully you'll spot them and go oh look at that look at that the dimensions of this book are approximately five and a half maybe a little bit less because you take into the consideration the curve it would be five and a quarter by eight eight and then it is about one and a half uh, inches thick I have put nine signatures into it isn't that beautiful oh, I love that view in any book um, there are nine signatures in this book I've put a hidden hollow back spine into it so that means you can see right down in there and that means it opens up nice and flat for when you want to write in it and uh, it just makes for a, a nicer profile for the book I think um, as I said this is a big chunky monkey she is uh, 242 pages of varying sizes approximately I count and recount and recount and I seem to get a different number each time but they're all in that bar ballpark so big journal uh, I've tried to put in many of the original pages back into it I've also used a lot of old folios out of other old books and uh, there's even a little Edith Holden in here here and there so uh, we'll get started here um, in when you open it up this is also some of the original end papers the marbled papers it was so pretty I had to save it this I fussy cut an old master's painting uh, a Flemish painting from Massis I believe it's pronounced uh, the painting if you wish to look it up it's from the 1500s um, and it's called The Money Changer and His Wife. And this is the wife. And I think this is the woman who had this book at some point. And uh, if you see here, you'll see, I always like to when I can, 1899. So uh, this book is 124 years old. I fussy cut the shelf from out of the painting as well and originally it was up high I placed it lower and I put this round curved mirror onto the shelf which is what she's gazing at and maybe she's looking at that mirror and thinking hmm I think it's time to go exploring I just get that impression she just looks like she uh, is an adventurer and uh, so that's the original first page of the book there was another because there were several stories within this volume I was able to save the front page for the roundabout papers because I've pretty well ignored the other stories that were in the book because I just loved roundabout papers uh, this is uh, vintage, uh, which reminds me, if any of my generous, uh, wonderful people who have shared happy mail and happy gifts with me, if you spot things in here that you um, shared with me, please know. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And that they found their new home in Roundabout Papers. So this is actually a paper that was used for wrapping pounds of butter and it's vintage and that yellowing is natural uh, mother nature and father time did that many of the pages throughout this whole book 242 of them did i say uh i hand tore i didn't use a tear ruler but i wanted a really raggedy old looking edge so that's a hand torn edge uh, the tea dyed, I did myself, and uh, I inked the edge to really accentuate that nice raw look. This is a tag that I created, and it actually is like a, fo a folio, and it's sewn right in to the signature. Um, a vintage 
a statement. You can tell because the year up here says 19, so it was from the previous century. How's that for making you a little nervous how old we're getting? Did a little collaging here with a tuck spot. This piece of paper that I glued along the edge, I just loved that glorious staining from cellophane paper, actually came from, we'll get to it later, there's a folio of music in this journal, and this was the edge that I didn't need, but I still loved it and wanted to put it back in. Uh, many of the, for the, for the roundabout papers uh, story, uh, roundabout papers was at the top of those pages and I hand cut them out and glued them throughout this book because I just loved it. So you'll see there's lots of room for you to journal in. Although I did go kind of nuts, um, I, I left lots of room for you. So this is a page from an old uh, stamp collector's book. And then I did a little collaging down the side here and sewed a few little buttons on here. And this as well is a vintage receipt. You can tell because it says 19 there uh, from the previous century. More tea dyed papers, tea dyed uh, graph paper here. The other side of the uh, shipping tag that I made from actually an old file folder and a rusty paper clip there. This is the other side of the butter paper and another roundabout papers up there. This was from the butter paper as well. I made a pocket out of it. And here is one of the front chapter heading pages and it says roundabout papers there. So I had to use that. And I doubled this up to make it a little stronger and turned it into a pocket and uh, put in some little little pieces of tea dyed paper here and this came out of a book and I backed it with some packing paper from when I ordered something from Amazon so that it could be journaled on on the back but it was out of a book. This page opens up and you can journal in there and journal on here and journal on here and it says dream, little a little word snippet there. But it's also like a large belly band. And I put a tea dyed uh, sheet from a game, a vintage game that was called Word Thief. I've never heard of Word Thief. I've never played it. But um, I got the score pad from one of them. Uh, on this page, I've made a tab. I didn't make, I made the tab, I did not create the stamp with the beautiful torn edge. There's one on both sides, that came from Happy Mail. And then, but I did add uh, this little aged tag. I made it look older with the help of alcohol inks and stamps and old silk ribbons. This page came from a 1916 uh, Reckoner, which is uh, their version of a calculator. It's from a tea dyed page from a diary that I took apart. This paper I recently got on uh, a fun antiquing and book hunting trip that I did with some friends. And I think it's from the 1940s because most of the writing that's in this ledger is dated in the 1940s. That says 1946. Um, here's actually the music, 1940, from where I tore off uh, the that paper that I mentioned earlier. And I just sewed a little ribbon and it on there. Again, roundabout papers up there. And this again is more paper that was packed in around uh, something I ordered from Amazon. So everything gets used. Still room for journaling here and here. 
uh, this was some fun that I had. If you follow me, you know I get a little bit of juvenile giggles from laxative ads from old magazines and such. And this is a free sample envelope uh, that was from cold tablets, but apparently they have a laxative effect. <laughs> So I fussy cut a, a toilet out of a book I had on antiques, uh, and apparently this is an 1895 toilet called the Lowdown Suite. Now this is also a tuck spot, and inside, thank you to the person who gave me the idea, there's a, a little, I, I fussy cut this out of, uh, oh I forget now, and backed it and put some toilet paper. On the back so that's in there uh, but you can put it wherever you want or if that's not your thing then you know what get rid of it it's also a tuck spot so because I only glued it along that edge so I've tucked this card in here which was also from happy mail or happy gift and uh, I think that looks great there Again, tons of tons of journaling space. This is from an old file folder. Um, I decided after the fact that I wanted to put this little tab of lace up here, but I still wanted it to look sewn on. So I sewed the lace and then glued it on. And that's something that you can do if you've already put your book together and you know that there's no way your book is going to fit underneath the foot of your sewing machine you can still give the illusion of it being sewn on Let's see how it's not through on the other side but it still looks cool uh, this is the um, page from another book i save pages from other books that i've turned into journals nothing goes to waste and because i can't use every single page in each journal I make, um, they go into other books here and there. Here's some uh, vintage ledger paper that came from a Happy Mail. Some I sewed on a little bit of lace here. I actually did the faux sewing again. So I sewed the lace and then I glued it on because this paper was old and I didn't think it could take it could handle a needle going through it. So this was a safer way to do that. And again, I had fun over here uh, gluing on roundabout papers. This was from some Happy Mail too. I believe she said it was from the 40s. In order to fortify that fold so that the paper wouldn't crack, I made some faux cellophane tape. More journaling space here. These are original pages out of the uh, original text block. Some coffee dyed graph paper, journaling space, original text block. And then here is on pages that have printing. This is from the original text block and you can see it says roundabout papers up there. Um, I created a, a picture from some um, just some papers that I have. I, I'm starting to lose track of what I've cut out of books and what I've cut out of out of thrifted things. But I backed it onto um, some old paper and again Amazon torn paper. This is a page out of the book, and I thought it had sort of a mysterious title to the chapter where it says on a hundred years hence, because maybe the owner of this book was actually someone who could uh, move about through the eras and through places and through time. So again, more journaling space, the other side of that ledger paper, more roundabout papers glued down here. We had fun with this together the other day um, making this up tuck here that says time traveler and that's when it all came together and that's when I thought maybe this was a book uh, from a time traveler and she was she would write in it her experiences and places she's been and people she's met and uh, so there's paper for writing in and you can just tuck it up underneath there 
I've put an eyelet down here and there's a little charm with a little heart in it. It's sort of copper colored. And over here on this side where it says time traveler, originally I'd put a number there, but um, because it was originally a sticker, it wasn't wanting to glue down very nicely. So I pulled it up and I put down a, an old stamp. And then again, I found a curious um, chapter title that I loved called On Being Found Out. And maybe she was discovered uh, who she actually was and that she really didn't belong in that era. And, uh, and it was time to move on. So uh, I just glued that part of the top of that page from the original text block onto that side of the page. Um, more journaling space. If you follow along on my Instagram, you'll understand this hole here. But on this side, I found the perfect little uh, word snippet uh, from the original text block. And it says, strange to say, because that hole in the page, yeah, is strange to say. More journaling space. A little bit of Edith. More journaling space. Uh, this is one of those fun little tucky spots that I like making. This came from a happy gift that I backed and made into a journaling spot. Uh, this was also a happy gift. Nancy was going traveling. And uh, I, I said that funny, you know how some movies are so quotable? When she was leaving on her trip, I said, bring me back something French. And she brought me back a, a deck of French cards. <laughs> so the woman listens. And um, it's St. Catherine. So I just had to do that. And then there's a little, a little, um, oh, come on. Don't tell me I glued you in. Let go. There we go. Thank you. Little cigarette, cigarette card in there with a cardinal in there. And again, roundabout papers down here. And that's actually me when I was a little girl. I figured if St. Catherine's over here, I can put me over here with wings traveling about. And then a little word snippet that says stay for a little chat because I'm always up to hang, out, hang around for a little chat. Lots more journaling space. You'd, you'd think with all the stuff I put in here, there'd be nothing left for you to do, but there's lots of room for you to do your thing in here. Lots and lots of journaling space. Again, this was another lace tab that was an afterthought, but I still wanted it to look like it was sewn in. So uh, I sewed the lace part, but I glued it onto the paper. And then um, I just put a little pin on the other side, and I like how that turned out. Tile, I had found this little piece of uh, seam binding, tea dyed seam binding, so I just tied it through that hole from this um, check register, tea dyed check register. This is also from the original text block. Then there's a pocket down here that I created from some um, collaging that I did. And I don't like empty pockets, so I put uh, put this little piece of paper in there. And this is a vintage um, Denison st sticker, uh, Bluebird. And again, roundabout papers snuck about in there. This is from a fun book that I have on vintage paper dolls. So if you're careful, I think you could actually break this apart. Don't snip these threads or you'll pull that whole signature out. But you could actually cut her out and make her if you wanted to. Otherwise there's room for journaling or collaging. Again, same with these sides. I just thought she was kind of fun. This was originally in the book and in the book this way and I love it. Look at all that. How cool would that be for collaging on or putting some tissue paper on so that you can write onto it? And the back is absolutely blank. So tons of journaling space there. It's like a double tip out. So I just put a whale tail tab on there and it says Tour Eiffel 
on it. So maybe uh, this was one of those times the original owner of the book was visiting Paris. Um, used some faux cellophane tape here because I tore that by accident, but I still liked the uh, I liked the illustration, which is originally from the text block. So I still wanted to use it, and I figured that's what they would do. That's what I'm going to do. Some more roundabout papers up there. More journaling space. More journaling space. Tons and tons of space. This was a poem that was in the original text block. And I loved that it mentioned Northern Star. So uh, I put it in here. I'll put a close-up of it on my Instagram if you want to be able to read it. I just thought it was rather appropriate. This is from a vintage children's uh, reader, the Dick and Jane type reader, the actual real deal. Um, this was from another book. I just save pages out of books when they get turned into journals. If they don't get go into that journal, they go into this one. A little bit of Edith Holden. This is from a gardening uh, diary that I tea dyed. This is from a vintage typing book, learning how to type. I love that. It makes a great background for collaging on. Uh, this is another page out of a book that was just falling apart and it actually, I wasn't even able to use any of it. So I took the pages out I could use and the story was called Strawberry Acres. Um, this I recently got from uh, a friend. Thank you, Alice. And so I sewed it in. I liked that it was red and the cover is red. So, and I made it into a tuck spot and it's a, a vintage flashcard. And this originally did have this hole here, so I put a bulb pin and I buy old necklaces and take them apart. So this is off an old necklace and it looks like it's got copper wire that someone's taken the time to make to wrap that little piece of glass with copper wiring. More journaling space. This is out of an old address book. I don't even know if they make those anymore. Uh, from a book I recently found, the Paris book with all, kind, all kinds of stuff in it, but this was from the chapter on prominent people. And I found it interesting on the very first page with all these prominent people that they listed, there's only one woman. And she's in here somewhere and her name was Jane Adams. And she sounds like she did some good stuff. More journaling space, a vintage um, receipt from a laundromat. Again, a gift from in Happy Mail from the 1920s, you can see there. And there's the original person's tallying on the back. So I didn't write that. Someone else wrote that. From the original text block, more journaling space. Uh, out of a bird book. A little tuck spot here where I just had a little fun collaging with some sari silk, a key, roundabout papers. I just tucked in some tea dyed old ledger paper, the offcuts. I save them and tuck them into empty pockets. And then one of these navigating tools, I don't know what they're called. I have no idea. <laughs> journaling space, more journaling space, more journaling space. This is from the other side of the pairs book, the other side of the address book, but it's great for journaling. from a book on how to draw hands and anatomy. More music, I made a tab and I have a book on the history of um, 
photography and I liked how this lady was just looking out and on the other side is another one who looks very suspicious. More tea dyed paper with journaling space. A little bit of a tip out there and a little bit of lace sticking out. Now here's the money changer. Here's the husband of the woman on the front page who looks like she's starting to make plans to move on. So uh, he's there just busy with his work and seems oblivious to what's going on in her head. And it's a tuck spot. And I backed it and made him a little stronger. Had to take a puppy pause there. Uh -huh. More journaling space, a little tab up here, a little ruffled tab. This is the same fabric that I've used to um, strengthen the spine when I had to sort of sort of remake the hinge. Well, no, I literally did have to remake hinges for it. Um, this page, I just tore the edge off. This was a photo of um, some suffragettes. And uh, it's also a tuck spot, so I tucked a few little things in there. More journaling space. I love it when there's all these different sizes. And uh, some little tickets that came, I believe. This is one of the few things that is brand new. I believe these came from either Kathy Holden or Tim Holtz from this year, I believe. But uh, I did a cool thing. I experimented and I'm really happy with it. Let me hold this up close. Those of you who make journals will find this fascinating. I, I'm i not one to really use staples that much in my junk journals, um, but I wanted a staple that looked rusty. So I experimented and played with a strip of, you know, the glue, they're how they're glued together before you stick them into your stapler. And I alcohol inked the whole row of glued together staples so that they would look rusty when I stapled it onto the paper. And I like how that worked out. More roundabout papers up there, in case you were wondering what book this was. Again, tons and tons of journaling space. I guess that's bound to be when you've got 242 pages in a book. This book weighs a lot. I should have put it on the scale to find out. We're nearing the end here. I made a little pocket out of the tail end of a, a bill, a tea dyed bill. I used the window for another journal, and but I saved this end. So the inside is a pocket. Oh, a two Nanas bookmark with some... Um, well done. There you go. With some collaging on the back. Oh, and this is, um, again, if you follow along on my regular channel, uh, I never use the ribbon bookmarks in my bullet journals. And when I start a new bullet journal in January, one of the first thing I, things I do is cut out the ribbons. So that's one of my ribbons from this year's bullet journal. So my journal is going along in your journal. <laughs> And then the back of it is also a tuck spot because I only glued it along the two sides. And then on this part where it says the end, there's a pocket watch there. And uh, here's just my little Catherine Brown Clark and where I've signed it and it says 2023. So that is Rand about papers. I think I've covered everything. I just love this yummy profile here with all these things hanging off and dangling and and sticking out the top. And I made sure, although it's so tempting to stick things at the bottom, this way if you want to put it on your bookshelf you'll be able to because it, this part's flat. But all these threads have been double knotted, so if you're not a thread person, trim them off. Um, you don't need to have the threads if you don't like the threads. 
So this will be going along with the book to its new home, to wherever it travels roundabout to. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this flip through. I loved making this journal. What a great way to start 2023. I hope this is uh, the beginning of many good books for me for this year, because this was an absolute, absolute pleasure. Um, it will be listed in my Etsy shop probably quite soon. Um, I usually will list it down in the comments below once I get this uplift, uploaded to YouTube. And I'll also mention over on Instagram if you follow me there. And if you follow me on Etsy, usually you should get a notification from Etsy that I've listed something new in my shop. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the flip through and uh, we'll get together soon. Take care. Bye.